Well, butter me sideways, I am knackered. This video is gonna be a little bit different to the usual style. Um, firstly, because as you can see, I'm in a hotel room, uh, currently in Vienna, and by the time you see this, I will have edited this video on my 14 hour train ride home. Um, and secondly, I'm absolutely wrecked. I'm so tired. Um, this week I've been at a conference. It's been amazing, but it's also been really intense. So I've been at the European Geoscience Union annual big meeting in Vienna. Um, it's basically the largest collection of geoscientists and earth scientists and climate scientists in Europe and brings together people from all over the world doing amazing cutting edge research uh, on all aspects uh, of geoscience. But obviously as a climate scientist, I'm interested in the climate science. I've seen talks about so many different amazing subjects, like things from the impact of extreme weather conditions on the polar regions to attributing ice loss in the polar regions to uh, human-caused climate change, the kind of legal ramifications of attribution of climate change to you know particular polluters or industries, for example, um, the impacts of uh, aviation on clouds and therefore climate, like, like you name it, there has been a session on it. And it's really cool to hear about all this brand new stuff that's coming out because this is where we are at the cutting edge. You hear about the work that's really happening right now. Um, so I thought it'd be really cool to try and track down some colleagues and get them to summarize some of the stuff that they're doing uh, and what they were presenting at the conference. Obviously there are so many people I did not get to talk to and these are just a selection of people that I managed to um, collar and convince to go on camera but um, thank you to them and I really do hope that this gives you a flavour of the kind of exciting stuff that's been going on um, and maybe explains why I am so pooped. So yeah I'm just gonna put this in somewhere around about now and I hope you enjoy it. Okay roll the footage. <laughs> Who are you? You look familiar. My name is Alex Bradley. I am a lecturer in climate and environmental science at King's College London. You've had an upgrade since we last spoke. Um, and what are you doing here? I'm here to talk to glaciologists about all things to do with ice and also talk to lawyers and see how we can use um, climate science in the law more effectively. That sounds very mysterious and intriguing. Um, so what are you doing talking to lawyers? Um, well, the idea is that um, climate science isn't used that well in legal cases at the moment um, and if climate scientists and lawyers talk to each other more effectively, those cases might be more successful. successful. That sounds super interesting and what is your like number one take home message for either the people at home or the people here? Um, so in terms of my research, I'm presenting this week on how um, Climate change has made retreat of the Antarctic ice sheet more prominent um, and we've shown in that research that um, it's basically unequivocal that anthropogenic climate change, human induced climate change has made retreat of the, um, a specific glacier in Antarctica called the Pinellin Glacier worse. Sounds, I would say great, but it doesn't sound great. Who are you and what are you doing here? I am Anneke Vries and I study glaciers and fjords in Greenland. Sounds very exciting. And what are you presenting while you're here? I study uh, freshwater fluxes going into fjords in Greenland from a fjords perspective. And I found that depending on where you are in Greenland, in the north or in the south or in the east or in the west, it differs a lot if you get more fresh water from icebergs or from melting snow, for example. Very interesting. And what's your like number one headline finding or conclusion that you want people to remember from this conference? What I want people to remember is a lot of ice sheet people just care about the ice sheet and how the ice sheet is melting, but actually there's way more things that are important for a fjord. Who are you and what are you doing here? Hi, so um, I'm Rachel. I work at the European Centre for Medium Range Weather Forecasting. Um, and this week I um, presented my work on Monday and I'm convening a session today on machine learning for ocean science. That sounds very topical and very interesting. So what kind of stuff are you presenting about machine learning? So my work in particular looks at developing an ocean model that is completely data driven. So we take observations and in our case we take reanalysis so there is a kind of underlying model involved in the pipeline um, and we take that data and rather than understanding the physics and using that to predict we try to find patterns in that data and use that to predict future ocean 
So you're, you're using clever computing techniques to digest loads and loads of data and then churn it up into something that's more useful and understandable. Exactly that, yeah. So some statistical stuff, some computer science stuff to like plow into what that data's doing. Rather you than me. <laughs> okay, and what's your like number one like headline message that you want people to take away? So I think there's been a massive revolution in machine learning, but there are still some people that are skeptical. And so I would say uh, embrace machine learning. It's not going to replace physical tools because they have such skill and such value, but it is a brilliant additional tool to start using. Embrace machine learning uh, I for one embrace our new robot overlords so <laughs> yes they're coming for you so you may as well be on their side <laughs> you heard it here first <laughs> these conferences are such an amazing place to reconnect with colleagues the old and new people who you've um, been on papers with but never actually met in person you know people who you know through other colleagues or who work on similar subjects meeting new people for the first time who are doing really exciting work hearing about new uh, new fields new methods new techniques all of these things are really amazing and of course you know seeing your old friends from all over the world it's been a while since i've been to this particular conference about six years but i did notice there was a distinct lack of Americans or colleagues from American institutes rather and I suspect that's probably because our American colleagues could not get approval to travel uh, internationally particularly not to a climate conference and that is incredible and painful and unsurprising in many ways uh, demonstrates how even in the first hundred days or so uh, Trump has done so much to damage the international climate science research community and um, yeah, we, all of us are, are really um, very sad about that and really wish the very best to our American colleagues. Um, yeah, the, the US science landscape right now is not in a good place and it shows and it's a real loss, um, not just because the data will be lost uh, that is maintained by the US federal agencies, but also it has an impact, a knock-on impact on universities and the funding landscape and that has ripple effects all over the world, not just in the USA. So that was something that I really did notice on, on the ground, so to speak. And yeah, my thoughts are with my US colleagues for sure. And I do worry about what the future holds for US science and science in general. One other thing I was really pleased that happened is I got to meet one of my fantastic Patreon subscribers in the flesh. So shout out to Bearball. Um, it was really, really great to meet her. And also if you'd like to become a Patreon subscriber, can't promise I will bump into you at EGU, <laughs> but um, then you can join the gang. Uh, your support really helps uh, keep this channel going and really helps support me to make these videos. Um, and if you wanna do that, you can join over on Patreon. I'll put a link somewhere around. Here. Otherwise, I'm going to face plant this bed. Um, so yeah, see you on the other side of an incredibly long day of trains. Till next time. Catch you later.